established that for the most part they're beneficial and they, they're basically like a, a pre-worm shredder of decomposing um, plant material. Um, but you've, let's say you've got a problem and you want to deal with it. Um, can we talk, well, let's first talk about what people say on the internet <laughs> when you go on a Facebook group or whatever and say, I, or you just talk to people at work and you say, I got an ant problem. What do I do in my garden, not in the house, right? We're talking about the garden. I got an ant problem in my garden. What do I do? How do I sort these things out? Right. Well, recently that question came up on one of the Facebook groups. Uh, it wasn't my group, but it was a general gardening group. And within a few days, we had 15 to 20 solutions for getting rid of your ants. The sad part is almost none of those work. <laughs> You're never going into uh, business, Robert, with the gardening myths. You never, I, ever I, run I out. Could write 20 blogs on how, how to not to get rid of ants if I wanted to, but I put it together all in one blog post. So there are a couple things you can do. Uh, diatomaceous earth uh, will harm plants. And the best thing to do is to put it right in the opening, right where the nest is, because diatomaceous earth has to get on the skin of the ant and it actually dries out the skin. Right. So the ants will take it into the nest just because it's on their body and other ants in the nest will get it and it, it will kill some ants. It's very unlikely that diatomaceous earth will get rid of a colony. Right. Uh, you'll, you'll get rid of a lot of ants, but the thing to remember about ants is that the queen is deep down in the nest. And if you don't kill the queen, you haven't killed the colony. If things get really bad in a nest, like you disturb it, you, you stir the soil around and bother them, or you trickle water into their nest continually, they will simply move. And the queen will be gathered up with a bunch of ants and they'll just go and make a new nest somewhere else. You're not killing them. And they usually don't go very far. So you may not see them, and they're no longer under that particular plant, but they are somewhere else in the, in the garden. Right. You know, so you have to kill that queen if you want to kill the colony. You, you said uh, at the beginning of the section that diatomaceous earth uh, damages the plant. I think you meant ants. Uh, the diatomaceous earth harms the ants. Yeah, not, not the plant. Not the plant. Yeah, okay. Um, now, you, the... If you go and buy commercial uh, products to get rid of ants, a lot of that material has borax in it. Right. And so you can take borax and mix it with uh, anything sweet. So some people mix it with honey, some people mix it with just sugar, some people dissolve it up into a liquid. All of those should work. So borax is very toxic to the ants. Uh, borax is also toxic to plants though. Okay. So you have to, you don't want to spread that around your garden in any large amounts. So what you want to do is put it into a little dish or some little container where the ants will come and get it and they'll take it back to their colony, but you don't really want to spread it around on the soil. And you, I mean, you... a little bit's okay, but too much borax will kill plants. It's very toxic to plant roots. And you, you mix it in with something because the ants won't really go for the borax unless it's on something that they like. Yeah, apparently they can't taste the borax. So oh. they think they're collecting sugar, I right? See. They come along, they find this sweet stuff. They'll eat it. They'll take some back. They'll feed it to their, their, uh, the young in the nest. And through that process, you kill the, one, the other ants in the nest. I see. So the borax is poisonous and the honey and the sugar is the treat that gets them to pick it up. Right. And that, that will work. Uh, and that's probably the best solution for a homeowner to use. Right. Uh, borax is very easy to get. Uh, you'll find it in the laundry section of most grocery stores. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. And as long as you don't eat it, it's, it's very safe. Right, so you could mix it in with some water and sugar. You could put it in a coffee grinder with some sugar. You could do things like that. You don't even have to grind it up. You can just take white sugar. The borax is also a white powder and just mix it together. I see. About 50-50. 50-50, all right. Yeah. 
Now, there are recipes online that are more complicated, and some people boil it, and they do a bunch of other things. But the simplest recipe is just white sugar, some borax, mix it up, and put it somewhere where the ants will find it. Right, and they're going to bring that back to the larvae, to the queen? Um, They'll take it into the colony to feed other ants that are in the colony. Right. So the worker ants are out getting food, and they bring it back for the other ants that are in the colony. I see. And particularly the, the ant nymphs, or whatever they're called, uh, they feed those while they're very young in the colony. I see. And they'll feed it to the queen as well. I see. Okay. Yes. I like the sound of this. Okay. So this is, if they, I mean, yes, we don't want to bother them if they're not a problem, but if you've got a real problem, this is a pretty serious, pretty good solution, I guess. <laughs> um, so that, that would be your number one recommendation for dealing with an ant problem. If you have a real ant problem, not just, not if, if you hate ants, maybe you should get over it. But if you've got an ant problem, that's really causing problems with your garden. Um, that's a good way to deal with it. 